Așa. Să ne și vedem. Your microphone. Ah, okay. Yep. So you you want to share just the voice with us, so no picture, as I understand. I I don't wait. It's fine. Okay. Can you can you say something to see how we hear you? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Little bit closer to the microphone, or something like this, would be better. Hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hey. Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so okay. Uh, it seems that uh, we all of us will speak in English as actually we plan. Uh, we say, I say again, hi to Chan Chowa from Singapore. Mm -hmm. The format for this conference, as I promise, is, um, as, I, as we discussed, is to, to think and to talk about the threats against the societies, human society. The threats starting with the COVID and of course taking into consideration other threats as a military conflicts, as a um, lack of uh, water and food, as uh, threats coming from uh, space, so on and so forth. And this is will be the main, uh, the main, uh, uh, subject and objective of the of the conference how long will be the discussion one hour we plan but i understand that you need to leave in half an hour that would be fine okay and then i have to click on the other link yes, yes you, need to, you need to go out mihai okay. can advise you so i i will i will leave earlier actually just to be yes. sure that uh, i'm in time okay my interest is to hear different opinions from different people from different continents uh, we are here uh, from Europe, Romania, and uh, uh, oh, Netherlands, Christian, and uh, to the other side of the of the globe, we have uh, Cornelius Kishu from Canada, and Chan Chowa. Another important thing that I invite people which are linked and connected with the military. Mr. Buzatu served uh, years under NATO programs, and he was involved in the different programs under NATO. Cornelio Kishu, it's a, uh, as a military background, he's an engineer, but military background, he served as a high rank officer for Canada in different uh, conflict zones around the world. But different opinions coming from um, a, a physician as Mr. Christian Presura and Mr. Radu Dop, which is which are also, he's a scientist. But it's good to, to hear an opinion from Chan Chowa which is also a scientist and uh, he's speaking uh, from far away from Singapore. So uh, I think it's seven o'clock, Mihai, I have a confirmation from you that we can start, we are online? Yes, we are online, we can start. Okay, so gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, and, or, and Christian, because you are first time online now, uh, welcome back to Atlantic Run. Thank you for joining us this year again your knowledge are very appreciated and thank you for sharing with our people with, with the youth youth Romanian youth but not only uh, this year we uh, we share our um, spirit of Atlantic run around the globe we have a confirmation for people which registered from 20 countries three continents and that made me be happy and I'm sure that my father here Alexander Mironov and island father Father of Ireland also is happy when he can see what he predicted 30 years ago. He said that. He said something in 19. He said, we will see each other in 20 years in the same place. Now we are more than 20 years. We are 30 years, 31. And it's the first time when we are worldwide with, um, with the program. So, gentlemen, my challenge for you is let's talk about if we can predict the future now, it means if we can predict the future as we does this before. I invite Mr. Mironov. Mr. Mironov is a um, um, journalist uh, and mathem professor of mathematics and the former um, 
sports person. He, he is national champion in the fencing with a long history in a performance. Mr. Mironov, I invite you to start first and then we move to the military guys. You, they will scare us for sure, but <laughs> let's see. Well, maybe the, they are the enemies. So let's talk about that. Well, I think that the one sentence that would be suited for our situation is the future isn't what it was supposed to be. The future isn't anymore what it was supposed to be. I mean, uh, we should have been capable of predicting the future uh, based on uh, find our, uh, uh, being ourselves on what is happening in the world of science and techniques. That's mostly there. Well, things have turned wrong for the humankind for different reasons. One of them is that we are too many on Earth. 7.8 billion, it's more than the system could afford to sustain. The second is, we trespassed the territories of the animals, of the micro world. And since we took landscapes out of from the, the world of animals, we took also their problems, their vices, their sicknesses and so on and so on. And we are in, in that situation where we have to think of another future. We are, my dear friends, we are in front of a door that is half open and behind it, it is completely unknown. First enemies are, I said, are uh, military people. No, I would say politicians. Think that we are in a world where Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, and Erdogan are contemporaries. That is very complicated. The military people have the industry of war behind them. $600 billion is the budget of the American army. And $600 billion is the budget of all other countries of the world. So imagine that when you take a when you build a gun, you have to use it. That's the danger. I see our friends uh, smiling about it. So we are in front of several problems that we should try to, 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 to open and to discuss because what is the most dangerous horizon we should have is that what Isaac Asimov thought about 60 years ago the planet Solaria, where 30,000 people living there were isolated one from another. They were, uh, they used robots, 10,000 robots for everyone, and they never saw each other in, in uh, you know, face to face. It was only through television and in the media they had there. It was a prediction, a frightful prediction, but it could happen. So what I, I really lack, sorry, it's a very good initiative what you had, but what I shall always lack is the fact that we were looking each into each other's eyes. You know, the, the smile of our friend uh, Rado Dob, he spoke to the people. The way uh, Christy Presser uh, manages taking a lot of people after him wherever he goes, People are curious, wanting to ask. That's the way the Florin is making the 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 the, the show he is making or he is making. That will not be obtained by the computers. I think so. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Thank you very much for inter intervention. Uh, I want to check that because I'm happy to see Mr. Anderson join us, Heather, or not. Even the voice. I don't hear you. We need to push the button. Heather, I don't hear you. Okay. I'm here. I'm just getting everything. I'm just coming out of one conference and hopping into this one. Just came out of France's conference. So, um, uh, no, not currently. I'm just trying to get all the, the links straightened out. And this was the uh, only link I had to get into the conference at the moment. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. But I am, I am representing. Okay. I propose to go in a south somewhere far away in uh, in Asia. So, Chan, if you hear us. Yeah. 
Okay, you hear Mr. Mironov with an opinion from an European and a very popular um, journalist in this part of the world. How about you? What do you see? How do you see that? What, how is the, let's say, the another life, uh, the society there in, a, in the new context? You have also China in the north of, uh, of Singapore and uh, Asia is not so quiet region in the world. And not only about the, the, let's say, the military side, even speaking about the threats, you know, coming from the healthy area and maybe for the poor, uh, it's been a lack of, um, um, of food or uh, side with the missing of water. What do you think? What do you have there? How do you perceive the world? Sorry, you mean to, to predict the future? About the reality, what is now? It mean how the world is moving now, now and how you think will go in the future. Well, actually, my, my take on things is uh, what is happening now, the, the nature of what is happening now is no different from what is happening historically. Okay, so basically, uh, nations who have ownership and access to superior means of destruction is able to shape the world we live in, okay? Um, you know, after the war, Americans have the nuclear, so they were able to shape the world they live in. The, the other countries are catching up. China is catching up. China is trying to impose their new world order. And historically, when, when, when this uh, access and ownership to superior means of destruction comes into contact with each other, they will try to resolve the allocation of resources through war. So, and, and it's something that happens over and over again. But in terms of fighting for change, um, I, I'm a supporter of the conflict theory. If you don't fight for what you believe, nothing is going to change. So I think that is something that keeps recurring historically. So whatever that is going on, you know, the war, the, the trade war between China and US, um, you know, and all, all things that are going on, it's, it's all part of this attempt to, to control the allocation of resources. How about let, um, a question regarding the democracy? You live in a democratic country, in a democratic state, so Singapore, mm -hmm. as I know. How you comment the new leader? I mean, the new democracy in China. Democracy, you know what I mean. We have a leader for life. In the north, I mean, no, no, north in China, we have in Russia another leader about, for the next I, 50 years. I'm in Singapore, I'm not in China. Yeah. No, I, I'm in Singapore, not in China. No, 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 I know. I said you live in Singapore, you live in a, in a democratic country. But in north, in Asia, one of the biggest countries in Asia just decide to have a leader for life. With other words, this is the another, another meaning of democracy. The same in Russia, we have another leader. Maybe this is the, the newcomer thing. This is the democracy we look tomorrow. Maybe what we have now in the Western Europe, it's old, need to be changed. But I think that is happening in, I mean, okay, I, I will go back to what I said just now, that history repeats itself. So people who already have ownership of resources and power, they are all reluctant to give it up. So they will try one way or another to continue to hold on to power. So if you take, take the case of Singapore, you know, um, we cannot say what we want. So I'm going to tell you something. And if I disappear tomorrow, you will know why. And it's the same in Singapore. I mean, Lee Kuan Yew died. He gave, his, he gave the throne to his son. His son is able to do whatever he please. His wife, con com his wife controls the... Uh, the investment of Singapore. So this couple basically owns everything. And if you piss them off, they find ways and means to come after you. You know, all of a sudden, uh, you will be charged for this, you'll be charged for that. Um, you, you go out and stand alone, one person with a blank piece of paper. They can arrest you if, you, if they want. So, so, you know, it's, it's actually a very frustrating situation. And I, I mean, for me, for me, and for me, my position in Singapore is this. I will say whatever I want and do whatever I want. Okay? And, and you need to be, 
you need to be prepared to pay the ultimate price. And for me, my ultimate price is a suicide protest. So if the government comes after me and tries to screw me up, I will retaliate with a suicide protest. Okay, I understand. Thank you, Chan. I want to move now to speak with the scientist because we have only 15 minutes with uh, Christian Presser uh, between us. Then he needs to move for another conference. Christian, first, please unmute your microphone. Okay, good. You hear me? I, you hear me and I want to hear you too. So from the scientist perspective, also scientists has a lot of challenge, including now when we need to find the solution against the COVID. The scientists play an important role. This is one threat. How about other threats or other good things which are coming from your side, this means scientist side, who can help or can not help to predict the future? Yeah, I would go back to what you said, the pandemia which we have now in the world with the virus, because actually the topic of this uh, thing is, uh, can we still predict the future? If the world is evolving so fast, can we still predict the future? And I have to say that this pandemic or what is happening right now in the world was kind of predicted. Bill Gates and other guys discussed about it many years ago, five years ago. I read a paper, a very good paper and a very large paper, paper saying that this is going to come already five years ago in details. They said that this is going to be another type of, of virus SARS-CoV. Uh, and they predicted what is going to happen.